The most famous validation library Zod has just received a new major version and with it come a lot of awesome new features, including a new sub package. Of course, we're talking about Zod version 4 since the last major update happened in 2021. So Zod is now faster than ever when it comes to parsing. So it's now 2.6 times faster to parse strings, 3 times faster to parse arrays and 7 times faster to parse objects and you can imagine when you combine all of this how much faster parsing is going to be in Zod. And the craziest thing is that Zod is used in so many places inside your application. In front end, we're talking about validating the form inputs and also validating the responses we get from the server and on the server parsing the requests and also environment variables. So taking all of this into account, this really adds up a lot. They have also drastically reduced the amount of TypeScript code that is generated when you create Zod types. And this means that you're just going to get faster feedback when working on Zod in Visual Studio Code. They have also drastically reduced the core bundle size, which means that your application that uses Zod is just going to be way smaller when you build it. In other words, it's just going to load faster. And if bundle size is so important to you, they actually introduced a new sub package called Zod Mini. The cool thing about Zod Mini or how it differs from the core Zod package is that it's easily tree shakeable. And how they achieve this is by having a slightly different API. Let's take a look at how the code looks like. So this is the code that you would write in the normal Zod library z.string and then you make it optional by calling another function that exists already in this object and then you can just continue calling other functions like or or extend and so forth but if you take a look at zod mini this looks slightly different because we are actually dealing with a new function every time so we don't call z.string.optional but z.optional and then we call it with the string, which means that the functions that are actually used are the only ones that are being imported. And in order to make it easier to declare such types, they have added a new function called check. And here you can add all your constraints. And of course, the new functions have the same names as before. So it should be really easy to use the new Zod package. And just for your information, Zod mini is 6.6 .6 times smaller than Zod. So it makes it perfect to use in the front end. Zod version 4 also introduces a new concept for metadata, which is a global registry. And here you can save all your types and you can also get really easy access to them. And another feature that developers have been longing to for a while is to easily convert a Zod type to a JSON schema. And that's now possible using the to JSON schema function. And this is obviously a huge game changer, especially if you're defining your types using Zod in your backend and you want to expose these types for other systems. Zod version 4 also comes with a new function called interface that you can use for creating objects. Obviously, this is very similar to the object function, but it has one slight difference. So with objects, it was not possible to differentiate between optional keys and optional values. So in TypeScript, there are two types of undefined values. You can either commit the key at once or you can have the key and the value as undefined. And up until now, it was not possible to define a value as optional. So when you set a value as optional, the type that is generated has a question mark here, which means that you are allowed to just omit that key. But if you want to make sure that the key actually exists and only the value is optional, you can use the interface function. And if you want to make the key optional, then you can add a question mark. Now, this is really similar to how archetype does it archetype is another validation library i've actually made a full video about it if you want to check it out but it's really interesting that these libraries get inspired by each other another thing that they have improved is how you get to define recursive types so in zod version 3 if you had a type that references itself you had to use z.lazy so in zod version 4 they have found a really cool workaround and that's using javascript getters and here when we're accessing subcategories this function is called and then we return array of this category. And the cool thing here is that category is already initiated at this point. There is now also a new file schema, which obviously really simplifies working with files in your projects. Now, if you have used Zod in forms, then you know how important it is to have clear error messages that you can 
just show the user and for that they have introduced internalization at the time of filming this video only english is available but i'm really looking forward for the next languages there is now also a new way to pretty print messages and that is using the prettify error and this takes in a normal error as an input and returns a beautifully formatted error now the message format is not configurable yet but this might happen soon in the future now let's move on to some Zod API details. So when you're dealing with emails, UIDs and co, you now don't have to call z.string.email. You can just call z.email directly. And this applies to all of these functions. And when dealing with emails, it's now also possible to provide your own custom regex for the email addresses. So you can choose how strict or loose you want to be with email validation. Now a really cool feature that is finally supported by Zot is template literals. Template literals is a great feature of TypeScript which just unlocks a lot of flexibility. And this is how it actually looks like. So this is a simple example that defines a string that starts with hello comma space and then any string. And here we can see the power of template literals if we define CSS units as an enum of either pixel, em, rem, or percentage, then we can combine this with a number. And just like that, we have defined a CSS variable type, and we can make sure that it always starts with a number and finishes with a CSS unit. I'm really happy that this finally landed in Zot because I can see myself using it in some of my projects. Working with numbers is now also easier than ever with Zod. You now have access to multiple functions that you can use to define a specific type of number. And these also come with a proper minimum and maximum constraint already baked in. There is now also a new fun type and it's called string bool. And this is just to parse strings that are meant to represent a Boolean. And this includes things like true, one, yes, on and enable and this would all be parsed as true and if it's false zero no off and or disable this would be seen as a false this is really useful because you can use it for example when you have a user input in the console if you have a cli and maybe even in a configuration file and the cool thing here is that they also made it configurable so you can also decide which strings are interpreted as true and which as false now, unfortunately, this version of Zot also comes with a breaking change. In version 3, if you wanted to have a custom error message, you would pass in an object with the key message, and now you have to use the key error for that. It's not a huge change, but in a lot of code bases, this is going to be a lot of manual work. There are also some other breaking changes related on how you define errors now using functions. But I actually am a big fan of this new API of not returning anything if there is no error. And previously you had to return this object with context that default error, which was not straightforward. Now, I don't know if you ever had the case of working with discriminated unions, especially with Zod, but now it's also way simpler because you don't have to define which property is used as the discriminator. So now it's automatically inferred from your types. Last but not least, they have added a lot of small tweaks in the API that gets rid of a lot of boilerplate. For example, if you want to define a literal object in version 4, this goes as easy as calling the literal function, but in version 3 you would have to use this union and then pass in a literal type for every entry. Another small improvement is that you can also call refine at any place when you're defining your type. Previously, you had to always use refine at the end, and now you can also call refine in the middle and then call other functions. And there's also a new override method that you can use if you want to transform the value that is being parsed without affecting the type. So that's it for Zod version 4 a major release that came with a lot of awesome features. So if you want to try it out, it's already in beta and you can already install it. There's also an upgrade guide. I'm going to link it in the description and it should actually be out of beta in a few weeks to a month. If you enjoyed watching this video, you should also definitely check out my previous one about archetype, which is another validation library that actually works with TypeScript syntax. It's a really cool developer experience, so you should definitely check it out. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next video.